Hi, and welcome to Healthy Kingston. I'm Janet Wade. And today we're gonna to be talking about healthy summer living in Kingston and the importance of not only being safe, but taking good care of ourselves so that we can enjoy these more relaxing months in this beautiful weather. First, what I'd like to talk about is the importance of hydrating ourselves during the summer months. It's important that you plan ahead and make sure that you always have something to drink with you throughout the day and the night, just to replenish those fluids that you tend to lose during the course of the day, and particularly if you're active outside. Active people should drink at least 16 to 20 ounces of fluid every one to two hours before you do an outdoor activity. And after that, you should consume at least six to 12 ounces of fluid every 10 to 15 minutes that you're outside. If you're working really hard, you might need to replace some calories that are also lost during perspiration. And in that case, you could use juice or sports drinks that can help you with fluid and calorie replacement. Be careful when drinking alcohol. If you choose to drink alcohol, do so in moderation. A good strategy is to alternate the alcoholic beverage with water. Okay, next I'd like to talk about how we can all keep our skin healthy during the summer. Number one, it's important for men and women, really, to exfoliate for cleaner, smoother skin. What exfoliation does is it removes that dead, dulling skin debris to prevent congestion and improve hydration from the toners and the moisturizers that you're then putting on your skin. It's important in the morning that you not only wash your face, but to use a, a toner and a moisturizer, and also a sunscreen that has SPF 30 or even greater, all seasons of the year, not just during the summer. The importance of wearing a broad-brimmed hat, not just a baseball hat, but a broad-brimmed hat that will protect the side of your face. One blistering sunburn doubles your risk of melanoma, so remember to get a yearly skin exam by your doctor and perform a self-examination once a month to detect any early signs of carcinomas and malignant melanoma. Okay, last and not least, I'd like to speak a little bit to bicycle safety. I have to say, I personally have seen a number of people riding around their bicycle at night in dark clothing, um, no lights on their bikes, and uh, it's very scary for the driver who could potentially hurt that person. There are uh, certain types of clothing that you should be wearing when you're riding your bike. So bright colors, putting reflectors on your bike also can help you stay safe. And it helps other people on the road to see you. And if they see you, that means they're less likely to run into you. You'll also wanna make sure that nothing will get caught in your bike chain, such as loose pant legs, backpack straps, or shoelaces. Now I'd like to introduce our guest for today. Everyone is familiar with Arthur Boyle, our health agent in here in Kingston, uh, and also our recreation director, Sue Woodworth, who will be speaking with us today about uh, water safety, the beach, basically what's going on for the summer in Kingston and what can keep us happy and particularly healthy this summer. So with that, Arthur, Hello, welcome. Welcome, it's nice to be here, and this is uh, probably the seventh or eighth show I've done with you. And Absolutely, yeah, and, uh, it is. They're really ticking along here. Yeah, we, uh, we took what was an idea of yours and it turned it into something. And uh, yeah, it's exciting. Well, and a lot of people have a lot to do with it. But uh, anyway, uh, tell us about what's going on with the Board of Health and what's going on in town well, we're this into summer. swimming pool season, so we're checking the pools, the public and the semi-private pools, and that includes ones in hotels and uh, the country clubs and so forth. Okay. And quite honestly, they do a, a terrific job, the private uh, folks that do the uh, pool maintenance. So we don't really have an issue, but you don't want to let up on your guard either, so sure. we keep a close eye on them. Uh-huh. How Well, besides... Do you do anything with private pools, or it's primarily businesses with, with in town? With private pools, we'll get a call occasionally for, you know, advice on what they should be doing, or you know, question that my pool is turning green or yellow or mm -hmm. something, and you know, it, it's usually a chemical imbalance, or right. you know, they put their, their above ground pool underneath an oak tree or something, and you know, they um, they, they figure it out, and the um, the vendors that are in the area, the the shops and things that sell the pool chemicals, 
and you're better off with that than, you know, for instance, Walmart or something where they can't really give you advice. They can only sell you the product. You, you're better off with a pool, um, and there were several of them in Kingston and in the area. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, um, it's much better to go with a pool, uh, pool professional. company and their products, sure. Uh, well, Kingston has beaches. Can you speak a little bit more to the beaches and the water quality in town? And uh, certainly, Sue, anytime you want to chime in, feel yes, free. Sue knows. We check the um, water uh, for bacteria and E. coli and so forth um, several times a week. And we pay a private company from the Cape to um, test the water and give us the results. And we just had contact with the state yesterday for the first time since I've been in Kingston. And they said that they're uh, moving into the uh, world of uh, the Internet and that we won't have to mail the hard mail or snail mail <laughs> the, the reports up any longer, that we can take them and have them delivered from the uh, vendor to us by email and we can pass it along to the state. Uh -huh. And the state does a pretty good job of monitoring it. They um, have a department there at the Department of Public Health that takes a great deal of pride in doing the job right and making sure that public safety is priority. And everybody knows with pools, uh, you can have problems because they're they're chemically balanced uh, generally, and you know there's always room for error. But the pools don't have sharks, so that's right. that's the good news. Right. Well, before we get into the sharks, uh, I'm just curious about this. Um, obviously, it's a continuous coastline. I mean, if anything were to happen, do you, uh, water quality-wise, do you hear from Plymouth? Would you hear from Duxbury? Uh, do you share results? Uh, we don't necessarily share results unless they request them, but we, we certainly are willing to do so. And you're absolutely right. The, um, the, the coastline is everybody's. And some towns are better than others on getting, um, for instance, stormwater drains and things, you know, draining into the public areas uh, are not a healthy situation. But there are fewer and fewer of those every couple of years. The uh, state or the environmental uh, departments will take and address the, um, you know, the runoff from, you know, say, Route 3A or uh, something like that to keep it. You know, as, as clean as possible. I mean, we, we live in a, you know, a suburban setting, so you're going to get, you know, some pollution at some times. It's just the nature of the beast, but, mm -hmm. you know, you don't want to um, ignore it either. Sure. Um, tell me something. So how has the quality been? I think it's been pretty good. I think in general, from what I read, you know, in the reports, and Sue could probably talk more to it, you know, having experience around Grace Beach as an example, it's the... Uh, probably the most popular place in town. Absolutely. And it's it's newer. Anybody who hasn't been there yet, I, I was there as a guest of Sue's and her department uh, several weeks ago, and it's um, it's exciting to have something like that in um, in Kingston. And you'll have to explain pickleball uh, because <laughs> I'm, I'm not up on it. But, um, you know, it's, it's nice, it's clean, it, it's a pristine beach area right now. And, you know, we make jokes about the sharks, but I don't think we've had any sightings, so. Yeah, not yet that I'm aware of. Well, good. <laughs> well, um, while we're on the beach, could you tell us a little bit more about the beach? What has been the upgrading that's been done at the beach, and how was it funded, and are you pleased with it? Sure. Is it being utilized? It's been a great project. So a project that got underway several years ago, we had some um, major disrepair in the seawalls that were existing there, and we had to figure out what we were going to do with the property. And uh, we hired some engineers, and we all kind of brainstormed and came up a plan with um, creating a living shoreline that would help eliminate some of the breaking of the seawalls with all the crazy storms that we've been having lately. Um, so that's how the project kind of started, and from there we received two grants that uh, myself and uh, Maureen Thomas, who was our former conservation agent, wrote to the state, and we received funds for almost $800,000 from the state. Wow. Um, one from Land Water Conservation Fund, and then also one from Coastal Zone Management. So it was a combined grant, which provided us the opportunity to do the living shoreline and take care of that part of the beach and then also to add some amenities and upgrade some things. So we added a great stage area that has electricity to it too. So now we can have concerts. We've done mm. some family movie nights, 32 inch great screen on top of that stage, which has been beautiful. Some boardwalks, a lot of benches, um, 
We built a new restaurant building, which looks really great on the back side or the front ocean side. There's uh, some picnic tables there as well. And it provides a great opportunity for our community. And along with that, in the park, we've had basketball courts. We have a tennis court uh, and a playground. And the tennis courts is where we have one of our programs, which is called pickleball. And they, uh, it's a combination. I'm not a pickleball player, but a combination I can only kind of think of as like racquetball and tennis, maybe. It is. Um, but they, uh, it's a great sport. When we first started, we barely had six people. Now we have over 60, and they play three or four days a week. Um, outside down at Grisby Park at the tennis court. So it's been great. So and the project just pretty much is 99.8% complete. Um, we received our last funding reimbursement from the state this, this week, so that was exciting. So we've been refunded all of our money that we had put out uh, there, so that's, that's a great thing. And then we have um, waterfront staff and park staff down there. We have them trained in both lifeguard certification, and they also are responsible for some of the park um, areas they help keep the boardwalk clean along with our facilities department and uh, they check on the beach stickers so you do are required to have a sticker while you're down there uh, non-residents can get them for thirty dollars and residents fifteen dollars or if we have a transfer station sticker and you live in town you can use that down there as well and uh, those are so sold at the board of selectmen's office Monday through Friday so fantastic would you say it's well utilized Absolutely. It's been uh, great to see. We actually had somebody do some drone photography during the project, so uh -huh. it was great to see. Uh, one, of the, one of the photos has a lot of the, you can see how heavily utilized the beach has expanded tremendously. It's almost, I'd say, quite, not quite twice as big as it was before, but it's, it's pretty large now, so it provides a lot of opportunity for families and everybody to go down there. So. What are the hours of operation? The staff um, are there Monday, um, well, seven days a week, basically, and they're there from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., so the restrooms are open during that time. Uh, if we have a special event, like the movie nights that we host, then we do open the restrooms during those times and things like that. Uh, we also run a street hockey program, kids' street hockey program, down there on the basketball court um, one night a week, and so we'll open the restrooms during that time, too, and close those up. Uh, so they're there every day. And they, they go through mid-August to the end of August. A lot of them are college students, so it really depends on when they're required to return back to school, um, how long we can actually have them being down there at the park. But can we still use the beach? Yes. After the Absolutely. Terrific. It's open year-round, weather permitting, so snowstorms we don't plow down there so that <laughs> our streets, trees, and parks department can maintain our roads and not have to worry about that facility. But if the weather's good, we have it open all year round. Sure. And I know we were talking earlier, and you said basically there are really have not been any safety issues, um, really. <laughs> no um, that things have been relatively quiet and happy and copacetic, and that's wonderful. Uh, I guess we do have to address the shark issue. I mean, there haven't been any, but uh, how is that tracked, and how does the health department get involved in that? Well, the health department, we really don't get involved in it unless it comes down to one being present at a particular beach that is under our jurisdiction. But the, um, the Coast Guard and uh, some of the federal people uh, actually tag the sharks now, and they're able to track them on a uh, you know, sonar radar or something. The, the fellow explained it to me, and I'm no expert on electronics, but he explained it to me it's like a low jack in a car, <laughs> uh, that if they're uh, swimming within a certain distance of um, you know, people or um, you know, areas Maybe that might have uh, you know, people on them, that there is an alarm system of some sort that uh, gets triggered. and. Uh, I, I've never been close to one, so uh, <laughs> I, I don't have any idea, as I say, how much time you've got. People say there's ways to avoid them and swim in certain directions. And, you know, mine would be don't get in a position where you have to worry Wait about that. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. Well, I, are you aware? You probably are. There, are, There's an app you can get on your phone. A mm -hmm. couple of friends of mine have it for shark sightings. That's the gift when to somebody who has everything. Exactly. <laughs> right. exactly. Our waterfront director, he actually did, he put that on his phone, so now he will uh -huh. get a, a little alert um, just because he wanted to be aware of the property. Well, that's good. Which is a good thing. <laughs> They're not really initiative. responsible for that as far as where our, our job is when we're down there is to communicate the information that we receive from the harbor master if there's a sighting or we need to get people out of the water, but I thought that was very, um, you know, it was a good foresight for him to put that on and he gives me a quick call and lets me know when, when one is seen somewhere else, so it's, so it's nice. Great. 
uh, while we have you here. Uh, what is going on with the rec department this summer? Well, the summertime is a very busy time for us. We run programs all year long from kindergarten, well, actually elementary and um, infants through, through adults. We do a lot of adult programs, but the summer is mostly for the kids. We run a program, one program, which is uh, kindergarten through ninth graders, and there's about 300 of them right now down at the wow. Reed property, and that's a six-week program, and um, we probably have close to 300 children down there. And that's that, quite an age, that age group. There is. So we divide them up. We have kindergarten through sixth grade together. Uh, and then we have 7th, 8th, and ninth grade together. And we also have a leadership program for the ninth graders, which provides them an opportunity to, they have some people come in and do some uh, workshops with them. They train them on interview process. They train them on what it means to be a staff counselor if they wanted a job in the summertime with, what, with us. A lot of them have come up through the program, so they've got a lot of experience. So it's called KREC Extreme Lead, and it's a, it's a great program for our ninth graders. And this year we actually hired three of them that came from the program. And, they're doing a great job. So that's sure. one of our programs, but we have multiple programs. We do kayaking programs with Billington Sea Kayak. We've done some robotics program with the high school robotics program. We're doing some great sailing programs with Duxbury Bay Maritime School. Um, so we partner and collaborate with a lot of different organizations, which is nice and helps to support us and helps us work together Absolutely. with all of those things. And being that this will, program will be being shown in August, what's the push on for the fall? So the fall, we've got a great program that we've been doing for the uh, last few years with our Kingston Police Department. They sponsor it and actually uh, run it for it. We, we have Detective Wells, Sergeant Morey, and um, I think Officer Allen who run it. And it's uh, called RAD. It's a safety program for geared mostly for women and young, young teens. So that's a great program that we're working on with them. We run a children's uh, dance program. It's a year-long program. And pickleball continues on. They move inside in the wintertime in the fall. And uh, so there's a lot of other programs. We do some adult programs. We do yoga, painting classes, uh, just, just a lot of, lot of fun things that we're doing. Tremendous. Yeah, the rec has changed so much since you know we were kids, and at the risk of sounding like my mother, it's so much better these days. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Well, and you are so motiva motivated and high-powered and out-of-the-box thinker. It's just exciting to hear all Thank the you. things that you're doing. So very much appreciated by myself and I'm sure the townspeople taking advantage of your programs. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, it's been great to be a part of that. I, I live in the community too, so it's nice to be able to give back. And mm -hmm. I've been working here for 20 years, and so it's, uh, it's nice to see a lot of the things. Some of the kids that came to our summer program now work for us or have been married and now have their own children that are coming wow. to our program. So I've been there a little while when well, that, when that yeah. starts to happen. I noted two or three of the life guys were kids that came up through the program and through the rec commission. And Absolutely. They're now in charge of the beach. Exactly. And Absolutely. that, not to go back to Gray's Beach, but it, it's really one of the jewels of the community and for people who haven't been there, um, you know, it's, it's just a great experience right in your backyard that you can walk to it from many of the neighborhoods in, in the community and uh, you don't need to worry about is there room for parking or anything. And it's just, it's, it's a great family area and um, we intend to take in the movie in August and we'll uh, have some fun with my own grandchildren and children. Terrific, terrific. Uh, I will be, you know, I have already spoken about uh, bicycle safety and skin safety and hydration this summer. Um, insect repellents obviously are important, particularly during the summer months. Yeah, as parents, uh, we use the term spray to play. Right. <laughs> and you couldn't get on the baseball field or the lacrosse field as uh, a player unless you had sprayed down with uh, you know, the insect repellent. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I believe in it. I think that it's, it's important to you know, not risk your child's health or your own health to, you know, be out and say the mosquitoes don't like me or they don't bother me or whatever because it only has to take one. Right, exactly. So making sure that you put on your repellent and be aware of checking yourself for deer ticks when and you come inside. And we work closely with the Plymouth County Mosquito Control. We have the athletic complex, Opachinski Athletic Complex, where a lot of our young players and athletes are playing over there as well, so they do continuous weekly sprayings for us as well and communicate mm -hmm. that. We've worked really closely with the Board of Health over the years if there's any situations. And they've been great. And we work with them. Mosquito control. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah, they one call and they'll come into an entire neighborhood if you ask them to, or they'll do one house at a time. They're just fabulous. Yeah. Terrific. Great to work with. 
Thank you both so much. Lots of good information, fun things happening this summer. So uh, important to stay safe and healthy this summer so you can have a good one.